We start in Winterfell. We meet the Starks. Eddard, aka Ned, Catelyn, Rob, Sansa Bran, Arya, Rickon, and the bastard Jon Snow. The fam is strolling through the woods and they encounter a mama direwolf, but she was killed by the horns of a stag. <clears throat> Foreshadowing. <clears throat> But the mama had given birth to six babies. Each Stark kid got a wolf, and they were named Grey Wind, Lady, Nymeria, Shummer, Shaggy Dog, and Ghost. The king has come to Winterfell. King Robert Baratheon asked Ned to be his hand of the king, following the death of John Arryn. Ned is hesitant, but after canoodling with Cat, he decides to go. Meanwhile, Bran's doing his little boy thing, climbing around the castle, even though he had been scolded and told not to do that, and he stumbles upon some sacks. The two sexual deviants are Cersei and Jaime Lannister. Ooh! Twincest! Cersei is the wife of King Robert, but having sex with her brother, so, you know, Jaime tries to keep Bran quiet and pushes him out a window. Well, capital D colon to that, chat. If you don't know what that means, type it out. You'll figure it out. Bran is in a coma and Ned leaves for King's Landing with Sansa and Arya, while Jon heads to Castle Black to become a member of the Night's Watch. Arya beats up Prince Joffrey with a wooden sword on their way to King's Landing, so Joff responds by swinging a real steel sword at Arya, and Nymeria the Wolf bites Joffrey's hand. Joff runs away like a little bitch and tattles to his daddy. Arya makes Nymeria run away, so... She doesn't get in trouble, and King Rob says a wolf needs to die. Ned then kills Sansa's wolf lady because Nymeria's run away, and Sansa is pissed, but that's what you get for not telling the truth. Joff's sworn sword the hound then goes and kills Arya's friend the butcher's boy, and thus begins Arya's list of people she hates. Now across the sea we meet Daenerys and Viserys Targaryen, whose family was ousted by King Robert in Robert's Rebellion. Viserys is a capital D dick to Danny, and he sells her to a Dothraki king named Khal Drogo. Danny was super nervous, but she ends up falling in love with Drogo, becomes the Khaleesi, and gets prego with his baby. Their child was said to be the stallion who will mount the world. Viserys demands his payment for Drogo, for Danny, and so Drogo dumps a pot of molten gold on his head and kills him and says, here's your crown, boy. Drogo is the freaking man. He also said that in Dothraki, but I don't know Dothraki. Ned then arrives in King's Landing to find out everything is a mess. Robert has a bunch of bastards running around, and Ned believes Robert's kids may not actually be his kids, thinking emoji. Tyrion Lannister the dwarf is hanging out with the Night's Watch up at Castle Black, while Jon struggles to fit in, and of course, makes friends with a fat, useless kid named Samuel Tarly. Jon's uncle Benjen, a ranger in the Night's Watch, doesn't return from an expedition, and Jon is sad. But Lord Commander Mormont makes Jon his ward to help teach him the way. Catelyn is sitting at home with Bran every day and night because he's in a coma, and an assassin comes to kill Bran, but Summer the Direwolf murders that some bitch and saves the day, and then Bran wakes up. Catelyn thinks Tyrion's the one who tried to kill her son because of the dagger that the assassin had, and she takes him to her sister Liza after taking Tyrion prisoner. Tyrion goes on trial, chooses trial by combat, and a sellsword named Bronn represents him. Bronn wins and a budding friendship is born. Catelyn forgives Tyrion because she learns that it wasn't actually him and Littlefinger who had told her that it might have been Tyrion because that's whose dagger it was lied to her, and so she's all freaking out, and Tyrion and Bronn go to King's Landing. In King's Landing, Ned meets the small council of Varys the Spider, King Robert's brother Renly Baratheon, Peter Baelish, a.k.a. Littlefinger, who has a thing for Ned's wife, and Maester Pycelle, a weird old dude. Ned relies on Varys' intel and isn't fond of Littlefinger. Arya hates being a lady in court, so Ned finds a teacher for her named Cyril Pharrell that teaches Arya the way of the sword, the way of the water dances, for he is the first sword of Bravos. Ned fights Jaime Lannister and other Lannister soldiers outside of Peter Baelish's brothel. Things are super heated. King Robert goes out on a hunt and comes back with horrible injuries from a boar because he was way too stinking drunk. King Robert then dies and shit just goes bad. Ned is imprisoned, Sansa is basically a captive of Cersei's, and Arya has disguised herself as a peasant girl. Ned is brought out in front of King's Landing on charges of treason. He pleads guilty for mercy, but Joffrey, the new king, says, F that, and has Illyn Payne chop off Ned's head. Arya escapes with a Night's Watch recruiter named Yorin, but Sansa is still a captive in King's Landing. Robb Stark, Ned's oldest son, is pissed when he finds out his pops is dead. The people of the North don't want to follow these southern idiots anymore and declare Robb the King of the North. 
Rob is also quite the smart general, as he was already able to capture Jamie Lannister in battle. Now across the seas, Danny and Drogo are so happy together it's adorable. Drogo picks a fight and gets a small cut from a blade he literally leaned into to show how much of a badass he was. Danny, worried about her husband, has a witch from the village they literally just raped, pillaged, and plundered to help him heal. That didn't make sense to me either. The witch instead puts a poison on the wound and Drogo begins to grow weaker. Drogo's life is coming to an end, so Danny asks the witch to save her husband. The witch does some crazy ass blood magic and Danny goes into labor. Everything's going hitting the fan. Danny's baby is born and dies literally upon birth. And Drogo is left in a catatonic state. So Danny smothers him with a pillow. She then builds a funeral pyre for her husband and ties the witch to it. She places three dragon eggs she received as a wedding present on the pyre to go with Drogo into the afterlife and lights it all on fire. For some reason, Danny feels compelled to walk into the fire herself and when the flames settle, there she sits, naked, unmarred by the flames and covered in ash with three baby dragons and the entire Kalisar bows to their new queen, the Khaleesi, as we hear a dragon screech for the first time in eons. The Hashtag Dork Podcast! Shut up!